Imagine your son being taken away from you permanently to the other side of the world, abducted against your will, not by some criminal, but by his own flesh and blood. How would you get him back? What lengths would you go to? Would you ever give up? For months now, it's all Bruce Laybourne has known. He's exhausted, embittered, embattled. The love of a father, the only thing keeping him going. Come at it, come at it, go to go Another hacker, another hacker. Oh, very good, darling. Come at it, come at it. You look at that video, there's no doubt in your mind where he belongs. No, no, he, he's... He belongs here. He's a he's a New Zealander. He's he's a little Kiwi lad, and wow, well, we just want him to grow up. You know, in this country, this is where he belongs. Nice puku. Nice puku, Dylan. Dylan Laybourne bears a distinct resemblance to his father, though now they rarely see each other. In fact, only twice in 18 months. Because Dylan was abducted, taken from New Zealand by his mother, Nil, in what is now a top-level international dispute. Okay. Nil has reassured me in a lot of texts and, and emails that she shows him photos of me constantly. She talks about me to him and, and, and tells him that his daddy loves him. Um, Whether, whether he understands, I don't know. She took him to her family home in Istanbul. <laughs> Here comes another one. There's a big ticky coming. <laughs> this footage filmed when Bruce journeyed to Turkey earlier this year to try and get him back. I look at the film, I don't often look at the film, it's so upsetting of Dylan, but when I look at it, I. Uh, hell, it's worth the fight. It's worth the fight. I mean, you can't, you can't ever give up. It had been a loving, committed relationship, albeit sometimes stormy. He, a successful publisher, she, an exotic Turkish bride. They set up home in New Zealand, but travelled the world together through his publishing business. Happy, and he thought, in love. It, it is difficult having a cross-cultural relationship, but with, with Noel absolutely embracing the Kiwi culture, it really was a, a honeymoon and it was, a, it was a lot of fun. Then in January last year, she gave birth to their son, her first child. It was the second time around for Bruce, who also has a teenage daughter. It's been a long time since you'd been a dad. How do you think you went at it? I was going to be a bloody fantastic father. I was, I had more time, uh, I had um, perhaps more patience. Uh, I, I was really looking forward to it. I hadn't had a son. Much as Nil seemed to love living in New Zealand, being a first time mum, she missed her family. Returning to Istanbul with Dylan, supposedly for a holiday, just a few months after he was born. They were to be away for three weeks, till suddenly Bruce received an email from Nil to say they wouldn't be coming home, that he wouldn't see his son grow up. <laughs> My whole world just sank into a, in, into a pit. I, um, it was a feeling of, of, of despair that uh, I'd never previously experienced, I, I, uh, you know, gasping for air and, and thinking, what the hell can I do? Within days, Bruce lodged an application under the Hague Convention for Dylan's return. The convention is supposed to ensure that a child abducted by a parent is returned to its home country and any custody dispute settled there, ideally within six weeks. Dylan was taken 18 months ago. Choose 
Weeks later, Bruce flew to Turkey, hoping it would be simple that he would bring Dylan home. But he was about to encounter a bureaucratic nightmare. Because even though both countries had signed up to the Hague Convention, Turkey hadn't recognised New Zealand's signing. He had no option but to leave without his son. That was the first attempt to get him home. We've all got much made. Back in New Zealand, Bruce engaged lawyers here and in Turkey and set to work exploring any possible way to resolve the dispute. And in the meantime, securing a court order to see Dylan again. It is really freezing out there. When I last saw Dylan, it was uh, summer here in Istanbul and the temperature was in the high 30s, so this is a massive contrast. In February this year, Bruce headed back to Istanbul. Concerned for his safety, he took security expert Wayne Tempero with him. <laughs> I'm just so nervous, I haven't seen my boy for so long. I just... I just want to hold him. I just want to hold him more than anything. Take him home. It's been a hell of an ordeal. I really don't know what's going to happen. We've got bags packed and, uh, well, we're going to try. We're going to try. We're going to give it a damn best shot. Can you give me the address? They needed to serve the access order on Nil's unsuspecting family. Man in a city of 20 million, all these little apartments. But if we lost my little boy here, how on earth would you find him? Never. Bruce, all the while, fearing the worst. That's why we've got to move quickly. Last we know where he is. What a horrible environment for a kid to grow up. He paid $4,000 in bribes to have officials support his access order and went with them to the family home. We're outside the Chichik household uh, and first reaction from inside was that the older sister said they had a gun and they didn't know who was out there and they were frightened. The officials from the courthouse then scattered and hid behind cars and it was left just two Kiwis standing in the street. Our next concern was that they'd try and run away with Dylan so Wayne went to the back door. The mother-in-law came running out. She had the door open, was about to open that gate there and saw me. Yeah. And, I, and I yelled out to you. Yes. And she said, what about a swear word or two? And then jumped inside, but she had Dylan in her arms. And he was all rugged up yeah. with a hat on and a dummy in his mouth and a jacket. So he was ready to go. He put his hand up and said, no, no ma'am, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> Nil eventually came out. Upset there'd been no warning Bruce was coming. But regardless of the tension, the three of them returned to Bruce's hotel. He snuggled into me in the, in the van on the way back to the hotel. He, he, it was amazing, he knew. And uh, re really amazing emotional time. Um, obviously didn't want to, just didn't want to ever put him down. Um, just wanted to hold him. Hug him, kiss him, smell him. First morning together. Oh, my boy. Dylan Rennick Laybourne at the scene of the crime. <laughs> Here he is. Up. Oh. And he's bashing up the interview uh, again. And running again. Oh, look out. <laughs> Notice he's got his military fatigues on today. This is obviously a guerrilla warfare tactic. He's sneaking up on that bear. Here he comes. He's determined. Oh no! <laughs> it seems amazing after everything they've been through that they would then live together for a week as husband and wife, as a family, as if nothing had ever gone wrong. <laughs> Take it to <laughs> Enough time, yeah. enough happiness to leave Bruce confident that they'd all be going home together. You think we're at last doing a few things the right way? 
She's, as you can see, very happy and talking excitedly about the family, the fact that we were together again and that, that we were a family and that um, she was looking forward to the future and coming home. In what now seems a foolish decision, but with business calling, Bruce flew back to New Zealand ahead of them and waited and waited. And the first uh, few days and then weeks were all very loving communication about coming home, the excitement of coming home. Um, and then gradually it gave way to, uh, I'm not sure that I want to come back, I, uh, I have fears. And then the messages became more um, determined, no, we're staying. You don't listen to me, do you? I can't hear what you're saying. Can you, we hear it? Can you put the handkerchief on? Court documents lodged in Istanbul complain of Bruce being an overbearing, controlling partner and husband. Come on, Lily. It's your turn to change his nappy. He disputes that, saying he's known as an easygoing man and that Nil enjoyed total independence and freedom while in New Zealand. Either way, she wasn't coming back. And then finally some hope. In April this year, because of Dylan's case, Turkey finally recognised New Zealand as a signatory to the Hague Convention. Bruce lodged another application for Dylan's return. But, and this is where it gets messy, back in Turkey, in Bruce's absence, Nil was granted a custody order for Dylan. Now under the Hague Convention, that custody order should be viewed as irrelevant. But Bruce's application was still rejected. So, we're going there. Mm -hmm. the For a year and a half, Bruce Laybourne kept private his efforts to get Dylan back, in the hope of protecting his family. But in desperation, he turned to 60 um, Minutes. Nil ile mi görüşüyorum? Evet, buyurun. Um, merhaba Nil, ben Yeni Zelanda'dan arıyorum. With the help of Auckland-based Turk, Tunç Sagan, we tried to find out why Nil had abducted Dylan, had made and broken promises to bring him home and why she's now cut off all contact with Bruce. Hello, is that Nil? Hello. Nil, it's Mike McRobert speaking from TV3, 60 Minutes in New Zealand. Uh, Michael, um, if you want to talk, you can talk to my lawyer, because what will you do? Actually, it is against my uh, personal rights, because you are uh, taking extremely wrong information. Now I'm hanging up. Well, if no, you want to talk, But, but we want lawyer. to ask Bye -bye. you about that information. So we took Nil's advice and rang her lawyer. With no explanation from Nil, we sought answers from the top about why Bruce seemed to be having to fight this battle on his own. And finally, some progress. Then Prime Minister Helen Clark promised to formally write to the Turkish PM. Diplomacy has done all it can. Officials have done all they can. The legal obligations do not require Turkey to return the child, unfortunately. That's why I have said that I will personally take it up with the Turkish Prime Minister. Despite the change of leadership, the letter remains a prime ministerial request. It now sits with the Turkish government. I want to put something to you. You've gone through all the right channels, spent a quarter of a million dollars doing it. Probably for half the price, you could have gone over there and grabbed him. Uh, you, you're probably right. And, and uh, I know what... I know what it's like to have a baby snatched. Uh, it is the most gut-wrenching thing you could ever go through. And I, I couldn't inflict that trauma on Nil. It's an incredibly cruel thing to do. Uh, and desperate. And I, I still believe we have more civilised channels that we can explore. And now, at last, there's real reason for optimism. 
Last week, we asked the Turkish Ministry of Justice what's happening with Dylan's case. The very next day, they contacted our ministry, saying they intend to file a lawsuit for Dylan's return. They'll be opening a new Hague Convention case. Finally for Bruce, it's hope. Oh, I will never go up the fight for my son. Uh, it won't ever stop. And, and I'm, I held that wee boy before I came home in, in February and I gave him a big hug and I promised him he'd grow up here. And, and I feel absolutely rotten that I haven't been able to fulfill my promise yet. <laughs> If you'd like to check on progress with the case, you can log on to Bruce Laybourne's website, bringdylanhome.co.nz. We're back in a moment with a 60 Minutes exclusive, Barack and Michelle Obama.